welcome welcome to episode one of the x3 podcast basically i have to do this whole thing jody okay. uh so jody and i were chilling one day and we did what all men in their 20s do yes and that is decide that we are the type of people who should start a podcast yeah yeah um that's kind of crazy we did do that i mean mostly mostly you were like we should do that and then i was just like it was mostly me because i needed a friday up yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was like yeah but i was locked in no tweaking no geeking i'm down and yeah we we so, are like some of the most terminally online people right exactly i think we offer a pretty unique perspective on bgc um because we go to events and we tweet like we don't <laughs> yeah yeah no no one's no no one's doing it like us no one's doing it like us no at least in that regard so we don't this is obviously the first episode so we're just now getting on our feet like we don't know how to like run a podcast i've had experience at podcasts before um but i don't know how to run this one every podcast yeah. is different it's like a it's like a child you know you have to raise it differently yeah. um but you know this is the x3 podcast hosted by me and jody as uh hopefully we'll get some guests on soon i think we have enough poll where we could probably get you know like joe james joe mama joe mama which joe which james i don't know if you have those names in bgc you tend to do pretty good um, yeah it's but yeah BGC cheat code. Uh, we should start with something that i think will set us apart from the other podcasts oh i'm down tell me about the the pickup lines <laughs> oh okay so you know um, send me the link in discord right now so i can have you, it ready i got you i want to i want to look through some of these i want to i want to like because i haven't experienced all of them for reference uh, jody put out this tweet that said flirt like a vgc player and I think you put it out like a year ago, and yeah. only now did you, because it's coming up on Valentine's Day, right? Yeah. Uh, Jody said, let's go through all these, and oh my god, I have never like hated this community more than in this very moment. Yeah. Um, um no. <laughs> I, I was like, yeah, like, I was saving that for, you know, eventually, eventual jump into, like, YouTube and other content. But, uh, looking through it, and... I think a lot of people need therapy, need to understand the certain ways to talk to people. Because uh, I was expecting, you know, flirting like a Pokemon player, just like little subtle, subtle, subtle things. But no, some of the responses were actually like, you should go Psychotic. to jail. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> some of them were like, you posted that online. Like, that's here forever. Yeah, you... Like we're terminally online. We our blueprints, our internet footprints, we're cooked. But down, yeah. they my they footprints okay. With, my footprints okay. Same, same actually. Uh, damn, they're just cooked. There, whether it's a picture of a porion, which is like, come on, man, come on, why would you do that? You can do better than that. Like you, if you're if you're like digging at the bottom of the barrel with the vaporion thing, oh. I think. I think we should start off with the best one okay. uh, from uh, Ragav. Hi, my name is Jody, and I have a lot of Twitter followers. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you know what? Has it worked? Mm, yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Uh, that's that's for uh, a later episode, right? When we are together, we're like uh, picture picture us. We are 23 episodes in. That means we've mm -hmm. made it through 23 Fridays together. And mm -hmm. we're at this point... Tuesdays, but... Tuesdays, Tuesdays. They oh, drop on Fridays, but... They drop on Fridays. <laughs> record on Tuesdays. <laughs> and, you know, we're in Chicago. We're cracking open a cold one. Uh, we're doing the podcast together. You know, I've been preparing for this by watching the worst podcasts known to man. All the TikTok ones and stuff. But we're cracking yeah, yeah. it oh, open. Oh, wait, we didn't do the thing. We didn't do the thing. Fuck, what was... Oh. <laughs> but uh that and in that moment i will tell you uh if that has worked but for now uh no please do not ever open up with your socials ever yes i would i actually want also, to on the site this is gonna be hard for you jody and it's gonna be hard for me too but i had to learn how to do it okay. since this is getting posted on my channel 
refrain from curse words. I'm sorry. I know you love it when we curse. <laughs> Did I curse? I know you... <laughs> no, no, no. But you'll do it under your breath sometimes. And I have to like very like... I have to be like, ah, is that worth cutting out? And usually it's not. Oh, okay. um, you have the uh, most under your... Like you breathe curse words. It's kind of crazy. No way. Yeah. Flip flops. Right. So, okay. I'll keep that so, in mind. I'm locked in. But oh, we forgot to do the thing. All yeah. right. So we we're going to open up like a like a tiktok podcast like the bad ones and i really wanted to have a guest on and like we were we were supposed to record this episode in person at knoxville right yes and we we're gonna sit down with like a joe ux9 or someone and we would set up like all the cameras we'd set up lights we would set up like microphones on the tables and we'd sit there in dead silence like this like hands on the table we would have like sunglasses on like the wraparound ray-bans or whatever <laughs> gold chain the most insufferable like haircut we can think of we're both like almost there um and then we would just after like three minutes of solid silence as soon as the guest even tries to utter a word they would get ah, and we would go what's your body count and then <laughs> and that would be a <laughs> And that was going to be the opening, like just a hard TikTok parody. Um, but Truly. unfortunately, um, we, we, we don't. Yeah, we fumbled it. Uh, what, what's what's your what's your your BFL count for regionals? <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm I'm close. I don't know. I think I I actually I I haven't checked where I'm at points wise. I'm like I can tell you my placements and then we can like do the math. But I yeah. don't know. I, I aspire to reach that point where you just go, no, I probably already have the invite. I'm not going to check, though. Okay, I wish. I don't, though. I have uh, I have two top eights, a top 16, a top 64, a top 128, and a 256. So what is that? That's like a little... Do That's you have like, any like locals, or do you have no locals? I have no locals. I'm, t- I'm All right, cooked. so I'm going to do the math. So top 128 is 40. Um, yeah. Okay, 40. And then the top 16 is 80, so you're at 120 there. You had two top eights. I think those That's are... That's 100 each. That's 100 each. 100 each. So you're at minimum 320 already. Oh, let's go. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> you're no, good. I, I'm, I, I'm, at, I'm at like three... Am I at three? Hold on, I gotta check my Twitter. That's where I posted. <laughs> oh, yo. <laughs> I am at... Uh, 289. I have to play one more local, and I skipped my last local to go mm-hmm. to that birthday party. Oh, love that for us. Yeah. Uh, we were, yeah. yeah. We, we had that going on. Uh, I uh, guess. But. All right. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> let's, let's, talk about, let's stop talking about how mid I am at the game compared to you real quick. Um, no, no, no. I think back that. Back to the pickup lines. Back to the pickup lines. I'm with it. Do, you, do so any of them strike your fancy? Did any of them strike my fancy? Um, yeah. I thought mine was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nuzzles your iron bundle. I actually Nuzzle called your someone. I- nuzzles your iron bundle with like asterisks, like you're texting each other. <laughs> uh, actually called I think uh, Gabrielle uh, Galaxian, uh, and I use. Oh, you hit Gabrielle with that one. Yeah, uh, I don't. Uh, I don't remember because I have the memory of a peanut. Oh, yeah. For reference, people, th- th- they were expecting to get called with these. It was not just a cold call. <laughs> oh, wow, Matt, that would be insane. No. Yeah, you, you warned them. I'm yes. glad you warned them. <laughs> like, you know who you didn't warn? Tell me. You didn't warn me. I, I, I was at, it was 11, it was 11 p.m. It was 11 p.m. I was sitting there trying to get ready to record a septile video which thank you for hopping on the septile video that was his punishment he had to like he owed me a, a recording um and i forget which one you hit me with but it wasn't mine I, I i like answered and i went do you have any idea what time it is it's 11 p.m yeah and what's worse is if we're going off at eastern time it's tomorrow what are you doing calling me <laughs> and okay. i forget which one you hit me with but then i i picked up almost immediately i was like Am I on stream? And then I hopped. You hung up, and then I hopped, and I was like, yeah. oh, "Okay, yeah, I was on stream." Yeah, no. Uh, someone was like, "You should just call Marcos," and I was just like, "Okay." And then I was just like, "Let's see what you're doing." I mean, yeah, I'm like, "Let's see, you're you're living the YouTuber life, like you're probably working on a video, which means I probably shouldn't have called you." But when I called you, one thing led to another. We recorded a septile video. So, you know what? I, I consider that crazy. a success. It is. It is. Uh, when does it go up? Does it go up, I guess, tomorrow? 
It it should have gone up two days prior to this going up. Okay, that's so that's for us tomorrow. Future site talking. I'm with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No. All right. So, I'm I'm gonna read some of these at random, and I need you to rate them out of ten, just at the top of your like, you know. Okay. We'll we'll, we'll both drop some ratings. <laughs> um. I miss you more than magma storm with a tilde and an exclamation point. I'm gonna say, uh, a for effort. You know, yeah, it's um, nice. It's clean. It's a little wholesome. It's not offensive. Um, no, no, it's not. However, uh, we have to talk about how this would work on casuals. You have to keep in mind, yeah. like it, w the the environment at which you are going to be using this, hopefully, isn't at a Pokemon tournament, <laughs> um, because you shouldn't be trying to pick up people at Pokemon tournaments. Um, but if you're going to flirt and you use Pokemon, maybe it'll work on someone at the bar, you know, and maybe yeah. Yeah. It, it won't, it won't, but maybe, you know, <laughs> I, you can hit him with a, I, I'm not going to write you a love song. In the oh yeah, write you. I know what that one is. Magma Storm is like, oh yeah, I played, I played Gen 4 OU. I remember Heatran. Yes, that's really cute. Thank you. No, that, that's not going to happen. Like Focus Blast is right there, right? Like it's also 70% accuracy. And yeah, everyone knows. Well, Focus Blast is less accurate. It's seventy and Magma Storm seventy five. So like, maybe you could miss this person more. That's true. That's uh, true. I I just found out that Magma Storm seventy five. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, I gambling. did set some ground rules. I said uh, some of the ground rules for this flirting is I am assuming that the person we are flirting with has an idea of Pokemon. Okay. Uh, All right. A real world setting, you know, like a bar or like a friend's party. And then the next line is perhaps at a VGC event. So, uh, <laughs> that's the rough part. That, that was that's the, the rough part. as you were saying, don't, don't, uh, okay. use this at a so, VGC event. If I had to rate it with those circumstances, that's like a six. Yeah. No, yeah. It's a six. I would, if it was Focus Blast, I'd give it a seven out of 10, you know, 70% accuracy. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Magma yeah, yeah. Storm is too niche. <laughs> All right. Deep staggered breathing. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm gonna give it like a ten for realism. Yes, yes. Um, you know, I, you don't need to know Pokemon to be able to just say hi. Sometimes that's all you need to open up a conversation that can lead to the rest of your life. Yeah, it's just a simple. Hello. I met my girlfriend by saying hi. <laughs> uh, I met mine by spilling out a tequila shot. But, uh, you know what? I think that yours is a little bit less embarrassing. You're so me-coded. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, oh, this is a long one. I, I, all right, for reference, I haven't read this. I am reading this blind, so if I have to blur it, like, if I have to, like, you know, bleep it out later. Hey, oh my god, I hate it. I hate it already. I, I read the second, I read the third word. I read the third word, yeah. and it made me hate it. Okay. okay. You gotta go through. Hey, by the way, the, the stutter is, is like, written into it. <laughs> hey there, senpai, blushes violently. I couldn't help but notice you mentioned my favorite gamey, wamey Pokemon Go. OMG. It's, like, so crazy that you mentioned that. Why? Uh, oh, well, you see, it's because im... There's no apostrophe. Im a Pokemon <laughs> Go player. Tee hee. And then in asterisks, this is an action. You violently make out with me. Ooh. <laughs> um, there's a lot of charges that you can press on that. But I yeah, also want you assault. to know that I called one of the girlies um, on stream and had to go I, through that same secondhand I, embarrassment as you. So... Yeah, <laughs> like I, for me, I I like saw what was happening. Like it's like seeing like the it's like seeing the roller coaster rail break ahead of you and knowing there's nothing you can do. Oh, uh, um, two. Oh, two. I would honestly give it a, a three or a one, but not I a two. I don't want to give it a one. I think we can get worse. Okay, I'll give it a two. I'll give it a two as well. Locked in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Two. Um. All right, I'm going to scroll randomly because this is a really deep thread and stop. Yep. Are you my non 100% accurate move? Because I keep missing you in the most important moments. It's a little too wordy. I think that yeah. the Heatran guy was more on to something. Yeah. Let's just give that one like a, 
a five, you know, because, you know, we saw it done better. You know, let's workshop it, though. How would you make it, you know, a seven out of ten, eight out of ten on the flirt scale? Um, If you're going by accuracy. Uh, what's an 80 percent? Are you hydro pump? <laughs> <laughs> Just go with hydro pump. All right. OK, we got it. There's the Valentine with a buzz ball on it. It just says, I, I like you, and I think that you are hot. That's a 10. That's um, a t- 100%. Directness, uh, handing them a Valentine with a buzz ball on it. That's like, yeah. it's cute, you know? Like, even if it's, like, that direct, like, there's a layer of irony with it where it just becomes cute. <laughs> yeah, and, like, what's what's the worst she can say? Thank you? <laughs> uh, go away is usually... Uh, pretty bad. That Laughing is, is bad. like worse than both of those. Oh, fuck. Your flub flutter sticks. Flutter sticks. Flutter mean. Flutter sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, let's do another random scroll. Okay. Are you a bulky ground type? Oh, you used this one. You used this one and, and it did not end well. No. Are you a bulky ground type who refuses to die no matter how many times I click Specs Moonblast because I'd let you ruin my vessel? First of all, it's two Moonblasts. There you go. Uh, second of all, this one we have the data. <laughs> Correct. Doesn't work. Do not call women bulky, please. Do not call women bulky unless they want to be called bulky, like unless they're like powerlifters or something. Yes, I learned and that. Maybe the hard that's way. a good thing for them. Uh, no. I can be the Pelipper to your float soul, the, your Venusaur to your Groudon. Together, like discharge an earthquake. It, I was on board until I heard the word discharge in a flirt. <laughs> okay, there is a lot of them that were very, a little too interested in discharge as a move. And it was just like, that's just, that just falls on the harassment. My problem with that one in particular is the use of the Pokemon that they chose. And it kind of just fell off at discharge and earthquake. Yeah, like y- y- you missed the... What's what's the term? Someone in the comments or on Twitter is going to tell me the term, but like when you have like a certain pattern in your speech and you're mm. supposed to follow through with it all the way to the end uh, of like a sentence. Uh, I don't know what it's called. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say anything that would potentially expose me for being dumb. If no, they... me neither. <laughs> yeah. All right. One more. One more. Whoa. Then we're going to move past the flirting. <laughs> okay. All right. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, you said like a Pokemon player, not Pokemon Go. Well, maybe it would still work. Tongue sticking out emoji. I, that's not even flirting. That's just harassment. That, it's just a poor response. That's like, that's like writing. That's like, that's like you're taking a test and you think that like the answer to the question number 10 is like the Ottoman Empire. And then you realize that you're in math class. Like that's not going to happen. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And like they, they, okay. And the thing is, they recognized that it wasn't about Pokemon Go, and then they still locked it in. And yeah. that, that says a lot about society. It says a lot about your dating habits because somehow you're making this about you when it's not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now that we have the terminally online portion out of the way, uh, Dortmund Regionals, we can talk about Pokemon now. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah. This is your fault, by the way. The fact that you brought that thread into the world, like we just had to make you relive it one more time. Please, I have to relive it again when I give my editor like clips I want from that. Yeah. <laughs> in a video. Do not include mine. Do not include mine. Mine, <laughs> when I called you the second time, do not include that. <laughs> no, I'm going to make a special note to definitely <laughs> inc- not include. Base boost my audio. All right. All right. So, uh,. Dortmund Regionals. Um, Jody and I just so happened to be in the same room watching the finals of this. Yeah, it's pretty uh, intimate. Yeah, well, not really. You were on the opposite side of the love seat, True. so it was a very loveless seat. Um, um, so we had an all German finals, you know, for a Dortmund Regional. That's pretty baller. No, uh, and it was versus it was Florian Temi or yes. Tem. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, we'll go with Tem. Yeah, Apologies, like Tem Tem Florian. Uh, so Florian Tem versus uh, Nick Schrott, uh, or Schrott. I don't. I'm sorry. This is. Look, I'm, I'm Mexican. My my name gets mispronounced all the time. I get a free pass here. Okay. Um, even though it's like a really easy name, that's probably what they're thinking too. Like somehow I'm throwing 
the, you know what goes yeah. around comes around. At least you have the first names. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it looks like Florian Tem uh, was running a pretty standard uh, bear room team. Uh, yeah. You know, we have the uh, Ursaluna. Uh, what's it called? Ursaluna. Um, Blood Moon, we have Incineroar with safety goggles. Terra Fairy is a really interesting choice on the Incineroar. Yeah. That feels like it's explicitly an adaptation, because it's safety goggles, right? Yeah. Uh, but it feels like it's explicitly an adaptation to go even more positive into the Ursa uh, Urshifu uh, single strike than the uh, Terra Ghost set can, because people were running Ghost, yeah. one for fake out, two for close combat, but then like the next turn you just... You know. Yeah, also, like, uh, it's good to, like, lock in, like, e-speeders and stuff. But, like, obviously, uh, obviously, like, seeing this team uh, make finals and win was, like, uh, was like uh, for me, I ran this exact six at, uh, at Charlotte. And I was just like, man, what if I hadn't bubbled, bubbled? Maybe I would just lose to Wolf. Spoilers. But uh, this is... Uh, that same team, all the sets are the same, except the Incineroar uh, was adapted to the meta. It's running Throat Chop as well for like mm -hmm. the snarls that will otherwise make Ursulina's damage a lot weaker. Also, because mm -hmm. you're not using AV, you're using Parting Shot, uh, which is just a better move, honestly. And I mean, into like into like the Farigraph Ursulina mirror, turning off Hyper Voice is like really, really big. Yeah. Um, Especially wow. considering, like, you're not only turning off, like, Hyper Voice, but you're limiting the amount of normal type moves that they can throw out. They basically have to alternate between Blood Moon and Earth Power. And throwing out an Earth Power isn't fun, <laughs> you know, like when you want to be clicking Terra Normal Blood Moon or Terra Normal mm -hmm. Hyper Voice. Uh, and also, you know, just shutting off, like, Hyper Voice from the uh, throat spray phorographs that have been running around ever since Wolfie won that regional. Yes. Also, correct me if I'm wrong. But, uh, no, Throat Spray only does voice moves. It doesn't stop Parting Shot, right? Or would it stop Parting Shot? Uh, it would stop it. It's because Parting Shot's a sound move. Vo there's no voice. Yeah. There's only sound. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because I was like, I know Parting Shot goes through sub, which makes it a sound move. So yeah. now I'm so caught off on mechanics. Yeah, so you can <laughs> stop Parting Shots. Um, so I remember cool. in 2019 when Throat Chop was like so big for Incineroar because it not only stopped Parting Shot, but it also stopped Roar for Xerneas. <laughs> So people were speed creeping. So you were running like Incineroar with a roar, yeah. which is like a negative priority move. But you would also like want to make sure that you weren't the first. You you weren't the second throat chop because if you were the second throat chop, <laughs> then you you know like yeah. it, it was weird. It was weird. But like basically, like throat chop was like one of the most important moves for the 2019 metagame because oh, it wow. turned off roar. <laughs> All right. So this is a, uh, truthfully, you can tell me anything about the gen seven metagame and I'd believe you. This is the first time I heard that. I thought you like, skipped gen eight. No, I, so I, I stopped playing from 2017 to like 2022. And like, I came oh, back. So you bit. never got to live through the Araquanid days. Like Araquanid no. was so cool. I do know Gavin won with Araquanid, right? And it's like one of the first regionals like Dallas, I believe, or the regional before Dallas. Um, I'm not certain, but it was I, it was a really cool mon for the time. Mainly because one, there was no Dynamax, two, there was no Terrastal. You just got hit by a water move. <laughs> there wasn't much you could do about it. It was so cool. You could take a Thunderbolt from Electric Train Tapu Coco. Oh, and here's what's here's one that's really gonna mess with you. You know, terrain used to have the same boost as weather. It was fifty percent. Wait, that's insane. I okay, I feel like I knew this one, but it has like went through one air out the other by this point. Yeah, but you never that's played insane. with it because you've only yeah. played Gen yeah, no. Nine and I, maybe the end of Gen Eight. I don't remember. Yeah, I did play, but the end, I played in like the Players Cup and stuff. Yeah, but uh, so. yeah, no, this was actually like Charlotte was my first time using Incineroar, so like I skipped gen 7 where it became a mon in the first place do you um, get it now was it like that scene in ratatouille with the guy <laughs> eating like the food he goes <gasps> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um no this is uh interesting i learned a lot about throat chop but yeah this team uh I, it's cool to see uh the adaptations these were adaptations i talked with burns about but we decided for knoxville because it did so well uh, that it's gonna it was gonna get countered and like Blood Moon did like nothing at Knoxville so we were right on that mm -hmm. but this just 
this regulation F is like a cycle, man. And there's we are. A, there's a reason Blood Moon was doing nothing at Knoxville. There was a really handsome Mexican guy running around with the Ting Lu, just winning every <laughs> every matchup for free. How many? How many? How many Blood Moons did you play at Knoxville? I think I played three or four. Uh, two of them. Two of them were Nick Donnelly's team, <laughs> and one of them was Wolf's team. Um, and the Ooh. Nick Donnelly matchup, like into that. Even though I played the real Nick Donnelly and it was harder than the first guy, the matchup became kind of free because when you're running Terra Fairy Ting Lu, it becomes a win con into that team because the only physical attacker is the Urshifu single strike, yeah, which you wall, and the other physical attacker is the Ogre Pond, which dies to one wicked blow or a close combat because it's max because it's max speed max eight attack because yeah. it wants to drop. So literally all it is is you tailwind and then KO the dude and then you get in the Ting Lu and you Terra and you win. Okay. And I did that every single matchup. I would lead off Tornadus or Shifu. I would beat the physical attacker, send in the Ting Lu and win. Um, and that was <laughs> that was it. It's just into this particular archetype, that Mon is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but also this archetype, like, it was weird. It was everywhere for like... Uh, two and a half weeks maybe and then it was nowhere for like one week and we felt safe and then it was everywhere for another week and now it's now it's hanging around but i feel like since it won dortmund it's 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 gonna be here again yep um and like what one thing i did when i did a quick scan of a uh, dortmund i think dortmund is a good picture of what our meta is going to be like because like i think everything that is meta did good like looking yeah. at nick's team the gouging fire gambit stuff and then the two top fours were chien pao teams and then like fevzi was using glim uh torn and there was a ting lu team and i'm still of the opinion that particular ting lu team isn't as good as is it as a, is who, knows? A, who knows i think I it think can fall e off. i think eric rios is just cracked i like <laughs> that's my opinion i think eric rios is just cracked all right i'm here for that i'm here for that um yeah but like oh, yeah um what's up what's up speaking of uh nick schrote's team i i got a dm from nick schrote um they had uh messaged me saying that i am the reason they wanted to start using gouging fire because of a video i made just talking about it um and i have always said i have i this is like my this is my like insane person like people won't believe me if i say it out loud i was the first gouging fire guy because I explained that gouging fire could be ran next to King Gambit. Yeah. And that it's a busted duo with Howl and stuff. And I'd said that day negative one when the when the when, <laughs> when the, the stats dropped, I dropped that idea immediately and I didn't get to record the video about it until I got home from it was either Peoria or San Antonio, whichever regional was at the time of that DLC. Yeah. Um San Antonio. I think it was San Antonio, yeah. Yeah. Uh so I dropped that video the day I got home from San Antonio. And uh, it's just the how strong are the, the DLC Pokemon. Um, and at that point, Will Tank had ran the King Gambit uh, and Gouging Fire. Like the next day, he ran that in a in an no. online tournament, like a Tommy Tuesday, and did really well. And then people started stealing that from Will Tank. So it's like, if you follow the breadcrumbs, it all comes back to me. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my one, this is my one bit of like, recognition on the gouging fire king gambit call that i will ever get you know what you take that to the bank you take that to the bank i know this is gonna go in the um there, there's a big book of times i was right because i'm like super insecure about my knowledge of the game but the big book of times i was right include the ting lu call include the gouging fire call and include the gyarados being objectively better than palafin and people just need to figure it out call <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, now now I have the lore, the Marcos lore. I didn't even know that. And now we know. Now the people know. And that's what's just, know. it's just a good got, feeling, right? When, like, someone tells you that and then they oh. did well. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The, um, the, the Gyarados one I'm especially petty with because I talked about Gyarados, like, a week into Regulation C, <laughs> explaining why it's just better than Palafin in every way, shape, and form. And I got cooked. Yeah, I got cooked by, like, a million people. And then I just... Um, like, uh, you know, a yeah. few weeks pass, a month passes, all of a sudden Palafin's nowhere to be seen. And I go, mm, mm, you know, who's, who's stupid now? Who's stupid now? Low, low um, key, I have, I have beef. 
I have beef with you on that one. Which like oh, you were right, you were cooking. Do you have do you have beef with me because Thunder Wave plus Waterfall became a thing for like a solid like three months and it ruined the game? <laughs> no, 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 not even just that. I'm like I was like I was a pala lever. And I, I knew that Palafin was I know, like because you got like second at the first regional, right? Yes, yes. But uh I knew that Palafin was like declining and like watching the like new balance come up. But I knew that like like the way the meta was going, that by the time like NAIC would come, people would have forgotten Palafin. That's why I ended up bringing it there. And mm-hmm. what like like you were still slandering it up and throughout NAIC. And obviously Rogov got second. I got a. Uh, I got top eight. And then the wolf video dropped. <laughs> and it was just like, why Palafin just fell off? The tournament is getting second. Uh, yeah. No, but uh, it, <laughs> making calls and being correct is is the, the greatest thing of all time. Also, thank you for making me have to edit more. Ooh, look at me. I'm Jody, and I keep minimizing my camera application, causing it to stop recording. No! First episode. First episode, Jody. First, First episode. We're locked in stop. after. <laughs> stop minimizing it. Just throw it to the right. I, I just did that. I just did that. <laughs> but yeah. no. The, the, you know what? And that's the thing. I'm, I'm like literally also like creating notes. Uh, I have like a little notepad of of little oopsies. Like, trust me, uh, when this, when this uh, video drops... I'm going to see every time I cut you off and I'm going to go and take a shower and every single time I cut you off is just going to replay in the back of my mind and I'm just going to fall to my knees in the middle of my shower and I'm sorry I created that visual for you but let's go back I, I don't I'm, I'm, I'm the opposite I don't learn from my mistakes I get worse <laughs> I get worse dude I'll be dude I was playing my NPA set last week yeah. um or not last week a few a few days ago yesterday I'm lying it was yesterday yeah time flies um and I sludge bombed or I, I gunk shotted into a uh King Gambit because I'm like, it's going to tear a dark this turn to avoid the Flare Blitz damage. And then mm. it didn't. And I went, hmm. I'm going to gunk shot again. And then it didn't. I went, hmm. And then I gunk shot it a third time. And it didn't. I went, I hate this game. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next turn, don't, they don't tear it. <laughs> and I didn't do it. Oh, that would be my okay. 13th reason. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of King Gambit, uh, Nick Schroet's team. Uh, their yeah. team is... Uh, not like it's not like a, a basic king gambit plus like a gouging fire team it's actually um like a slight adaptation like tossing on the p2 there's pretty recent isn't it uh yeah actually um um actually here's my uh i think that this is the exact 6 that ashton brought to charlotte how to... was uh, knoxville no, yeah, we look all these. T- the problem is all these tournaments are like a two week period, and then yeah, the, time the schedule flies. this year is so scuffed. Yeah, we can talk about that soon too. Yeah. But yeah, it um, was that it was that team mostly with, but with the adaptation of like goggles on Gambit. Uh, yeah, I think goggles Gambit's a really cool call. I mean, yeah. like, there's only so much like, how do I say it? When when like Howl Gouging Fire didn't exist, the Dread Plate was like really essential to picking up KOs because yeah. you have the swords dance and then you, you know, dread plate will allow you to pick up like the KOs at plus two. Yeah. But now that you have the howl next to it, it's like, okay, your swords dancing and your howling, that's better than a dread plate. Like you don't have goggles anywhere else on the team. Just avoiding the issue of Amoongus entirely is yeah. just so big. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be honest. Uh, anytime I play like this Luca style like team like the the sword dance double dark move gambit, I just feel so stressed out. I'll... Because you feel like at any point, at any point, someone's gonna switch in that one mon that walls you, like that one random Terra fairy that's like super heavy, so gouging fire can't like heat crash it. Literally, like there's that. There's just like. Do you know what the mon is, by the way? It's the other gouging fire. <laughs> That's 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 toxic. Like it's, there's just there's just so much like variance. Not even like I just feel like I'm trying so hard every game, and like mm-hmm. I brought I actually brought Lucas team to an MSS, but I was testing Iron Hands for him, and uh, like there's a reason I don't have points at a local. <laughs> 
Locals are harder than regionals to get points at. I'm not gonna lie. That's my that's my firm opinion. That's your firm opinion. Uh, yeah. I just feel like if I was not running that team, that I would have points. Is what I will say to that opinion. I don't. I don't. It's, it's, I don't know about that. <laughs> it's really weird. Like it feels like Pokemon, as like a game when you're trying to teach someone to play. You're like, yeah. you should run. You should run like something that's standard, something that's like normal. Yeah. And then there are like those dudes where it's like, I can't. I can't do that. Like, and it's not, it's not even that like they refuse to. It's like, you know how like Pengi's teams look? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm familiar. Like, I feel like if we handed him like the most standard gouging fire team ever, he'd be like, I don't know what to do with this. But then if you hand him like some Rotom Mo nasty plot stuff, he'd be like, oh yeah, no, I I, I went undefeated. In, Let me in, cook. In, 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 like. <laughs> yeah, like let let Pengi cook is like there are certain people in the community that are like that. And yeah. then there are certain people who make it their personality. I'm glad Pengi doesn't. Pengi's cool. Yeah. Um but like there are certain people where it's like legitimately like, no, I need to use the weird mon. But no, true. That, yeah. that's a that's a whole different tangent. Um No, I I can call out my friend. They probably are gonna be listening to this. I, I just have a friend, uh Blake, who who just loves Reggie Lecky, man. And is it Kaguya? Yes, it is. I yeah, love, Kaguya. I love you so much. But there are just, worse mons to there are yeah. worse mons to be obsessed with. True, and I'm like, because it just like, <laughs> yeah, it just forces you to team build also in like just a certain way to accommodate that style, which I guess is like how you get that different perspective. But uh, yeah, on locals too. There's also just the regions that we're from where we have locals that like have multiple we have like our locals are like what five to six rounds usually like we don't get the four round locals or sometimes mm-hmm. we do and like it's just it's like a lot like why am i like fighting for my life for like 30 points sometimes i i i hated last season i didn't get my invite last season i think i could have if i like didn't play wochan the whole time um <laughs> but i uh, i'm learning that this season like oh i am good at the game i just need to stop shooting myself in the foot um, but last season, I remember like not having mid season showdowns really like killed my motivation to go to locals because it was fighting for your life for 30 points. <laughs> um, the freaking Portland regional, uh, the Portland regional PC that I won, yeah. I was not only fighting for my life, like <laughs> mentally, but physically, I was so tired and I won that with stall and I only got 30 points and I'm like, why did I do this? <laughs> I'm not even going to Worlds. And I was like, why Why did I do this to myself? <laughs> but no, locals, I don't know. Like, do we buff locals? Do we, that was part of a viewer question later. So we can like circle back around to that. Yeah. But like, do you think locals need to be buffed? I feel like they're a little overpowered, but like, it, it depends. It's like hard to balance. Like, you know how we used to have like elevated Yes, events? I was about to tell, say that. Do we need like, events that are a little weaker if you don't have enough people okay, i you know i'm a yeah i think you know what let let uh ohio gym get like 100 points because they farmed their four person local but yeah i do think that locals should be rewarded for attendance and like yeah. if we have yeah, these sure. like 20 30 people locals like i like the mss i went to was like 50 people and mm-hmm. I went 4-2, top 16. Oh, no, it, it was just below the kicker. And I, I just... what is it? It's 52? Was it 52? I don't remember the kicker, but yeah, it, I, I, that's that's rough. I remember finishing, and then I got top 16, and I got no, no points. And all I got to show for it was, like, my $30 gone. <laughs> yeah. Oh. We had a local in Chicago a few weeks ago. Uh, that my buddy Armando showed up to, and because Armando like is just now dipping his toes into VGC, yeah, he has like a Wo Chen Urshifu Fluttermain team with a Tornadus, and I said, hey, just run Joe UX9's team from Worlds at this point. <laughs> he's he's you have to talk him into it, you know. He's just yeah. learning, so yeah. maybe just let him have fun for a minute. Um, but he pulled up to the regional just to say hi. Hadn't seen him since like um a few months back. Uh, regional, not not the regional, the local. Yeah. Um, and we found out that we were one person short for the kicker so i went good news armando you're playing and i paid for his entry um because that he would have been the 16th person yeah he would have been number 16 and then a tcg player walks in 
who we didn't know was a TCG player at that point. He walks in and he goes, hey, I'm here for the local. Went, yeah, yeah, you're, you're the last guy for the VG local. And he goes, VG, I thought this was TCG. And we go, what? <laughs> so guy number 16. No. <laughs> was, a, was actually a TCG player who didn't realize it was a VG. And he went, oh, my bad. And he left and I went, Someone get him a switch. Someone has to have a switch in their in their car. Someone needs to have a switch in their car. And no one did. There were no spare switches. It was the most... Yeah. But yeah, that's that's life sometimes with these locals. They sometimes do be like that. But... Uh, yeah, no, I got, I got to start going to mine. That's just it. Because, like, like, my thing is, is, like, if you are good enough at this game, you're going to get your invite. Like, it'll happen. Like, just, like, yeah. by performing, right? Like, you get, like, like even if you're, like, going to be, uh, like, a certified mid-bro in, like, 6'3", everything. Like, like certain people. I'm not going to name names. Like, like, <laughs> like me up until a week ago. <laughs> Yeah, like even if you do that, like you do 63, and you do your locals and you like win a few, you don't like fill it up by maxing it, and then you get to do yeah. the GC. Like eventually, you'll have 500 points. That's why, like, yeah. when like we started the podcast and we talked about like where our points are at, I'm like, yeah, it's it's gonna happen. Uh, it's just a matter of when it happens, but like low key, uh, I think there was a tweet that was like, there's only four regionals left, and I'm like, but only only like 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 it just feels like we had too many in such a short time and now yeah. there's like there's like oh that's it you like we don't we're not going to count vancouver there's like there's like the there's indy there's la and there's orlando and they all happen like pretty spread out compared to this regional rush we went to we both went to what portland charlotte and oxville yeah we ran the gauntlet yeah, I, I'm I'm going to EUIC, and I'm spending the week there because I want to visit London. Um, yeah, and then I'm not flying home. I'm just flying directly to Orlando because I have to do Orlando, um, and then I'm doing Indy out of convenience. It's right there. Yeah, I didn't want to do LAIC, but my friend Aspirin really wants me to go, and also you're gonna be there, so I'm considering maybe. Maybe going to did I say LAIC? You did say LAIC. I just was sorry. Gonna, LA yeah. LA regionals, not 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 Latin America, <laughs> uh, just the Latino part of America. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I might go to LA. I have family down there. I don't know. Exactly. But yeah, farming, farming like uh, locals can be overpowered for some people and like impossible for others. So it's like a really weird spot with like point balance. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then with like. I think my biggest thing Tough. with points is I think that literally if you are the most mid player ever and you go to two or maybe even all three international championships, you will get your invite because you can 6-3 those babies and get like 180 points from them. Really? Yeah, like the point, the point payout for these is crazy this year. Like I'm going to EUIC and NAIC. And I'm like, if I leave with minimum 80 from both of them by six, three, I'm going to get 160 points and then bam, there's my invite, you know, that's insane. Um, yeah. yeah. And like, and if you go to LAIC, cause keep in mind, there's no cap on the ICs. Like literally there is no BFL for ICs. You just yeah, can you go, just all, go all of them. them. Yeah. So if you, if you six, three, all three ICs or even yeah. five, four, some of them, cause you know, you can get points regardless, um, uh, based off attendance, you can get like. 240 points that's half of an invite that's insane. just yeah, yeah. Off of them. so oh. i think that they're a little overpowered but also they they should be they i kind of think that it's it's not the point payout per se but like the placement in how much you get paid out like if you yeah. do really good in ic you should get a ton of points right yeah but if you do mid maybe maybe not so many maybe like just Maybe have like a guaranteed. Yeah, isn't 30. like well, like six three. If it's a hundred points, that's literally as much as I get for a top eight in a regional. I'm fighting for my life. I, yeah. Maybe it's the regionals that are lower, but also, isn't top thirty two at a IC like two k? Is it? Oh my god! Yeah, you get money too if you do great at them. Um, yeah. Also, I just remembered. I I forgot, but now I just remembered that I'm pissed about my bubble. 
<laughs> about it it isn't even the money it isn't even the money the 20 extra points are just such a stress reliever that oh, i bubbled yeah. out of top 16 for that regional. okay I like, dang it i think that's that's what needs to be fixed regional points at least because like i said top eight is 100 but like like top 256 is what like 30 and then top 128 is 40 hold on a second jody i'm bossed up off this metamucil yeah, yeah you do your thing <laughs> <laughs> mm, fibrous okay continue no it's like it's like you get like there's barely an increment from like from top 256 to like 64 to where yeah. it's like it's like kind of kind of annoying like why why is it like that like yeah. why I, so maybe it's the regionals that might need to get more points i don't know is it i think regionals do need to be buffed i feel like not everyone can go to an ic right there's three of them they're yeah. in like they're they're in who knows where you know what well, we know where but like you never know at the start of the year where they're gonna be like yeah. you have to wait for the announcement but like point payouts for regionals could be a lot better um if the average person you know pays to go to a regional and they finish positive i feel like they should at least get like 15 points you know like even if it's a bit of a participation trophy yeah going positive at a regional for the average player is a pretty big deal um and, like, if you get, like, the 15 points, it's, like, you don't feel like the day was wasted. And it, like, will encourage... it Without, like, being an overpowered thing to farm, because there are only six best finishes, mm -hmm. um, allowing, like, the average guy to get 15 points for going 5-4 is not, not, not really a bad idea. No, we have so many new players, too, who are just happy to, like, finish positive, right? And then they're like, wow. Yeah. I can like begin a path to worlds, right? Or like you know, yeah. just like and finishing begin. positive with no points is like so. For the fact that like there used to be regionals where you could go six three and get no points is like ridiculous to me. So goofy, but uh, yeah. you know, honestly, I think that's the other thing. I'm glad that I skipped 2017 to 2022. Is just like wasn't like attendance like pretty low uh, pre pandemic. It was, uh, attendance for 2017 to 2018 and 2019, I think we, like, had record low-ish 2019, mm -hmm. but 2017 and 2018, we had some pretty good attendance, but you have to keep in mind, pretty good attendance back then, or even great attendance, was, like, 300 players. Yeah, that's insane. Like, remember, remember when that was a thing, and now we have, like... 900 people at charlotte or whatever yeah um, <laughs> we're complaining yeah. that we don't have enough slots <laughs> yeah like that i honestly it makes me happy to play the game the fact yeah. that like it feels like even though it's been so many years since i started like it's it's ramping up rather than slowing down yeah so but yeah uh quick we should probably talk a little bit more about dortmund True. um we do so the same tangent uh pow night at third kind of a big deal we know i thought pound was a little bit dead yeah. um because forigraph exists but i think that a lot less people are picking up forigraph now that um bear room is less common but also yeah. bear room just won a regional so bear room is going to be more common welcome <laughs> to the machine welcome <laughs> to the cycle um <sighs> the ting lu team continues to just barely reach like the point where it's notable where we're like oh yeah we should probably keep an eye out for this true um it continues to not make it past top eight, um, but it's still very good. And, you know, according to some of the players, it could just be due to crits and stuff. Uh, but, you know, that's what I think happens. Yeah, of um, course. Other things, there, Maddie Morgan with a Roaring Moon in 11th is actually pretty nuts. I feel like Roaring Moon, Roaring Moon, like, the only thing it has over Gouging Fire to me is literally just, like, tailwind but he wasn't even running he was running like yeah. acrobatics dragon dance um it feels like it's a mon that just doesn't go away despite like the mid allegations so uh this is actually i feel like every team we've talked about we have like a backstory from each of us but this mm -hmm. is actually the exact same team like sets almost close to sets uh that i used at, at knoxville i went six three but uh this team also won uh, Melbourne Regionals, which happened the same week as Knoxville, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so it's like balancey teams have a place. What makes Roaring Moon cool is unlike unlike the uh, unlike Gouging Fire is that it is 
a consistent source of flying damage. And that's something that's missing in this format, unless you're using, like, Tornidus. Or and, like, you know, Bleak Wind Storm isn't really a... It's not really it, man. Keep on gambling. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, like, this team, uh, a lot... It just it just uses good Pokemon. And Cinnamungus is just it's that core. Flutter mm-hmm. Ogre Pond, that's one and two right there. Sometimes three, according to when Urshifu single strike like bros. So like this is just good. This is like good Pokemon the team, and then like Roaring Moon is like specifically good into a lot of random meta stuff. Just consistent yeah. flying damage. I'm a fan of the Terra Electric AV Raging Bolt because we tend to see Fairy on those because mm-hmm. defensively Terra Fairy Raging Bolt's like ridiculous at times. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the Terra Electric just allows it to like instantly because they usually run like what like a hundred special attack. Um. It just allows you to instantly just go, all right, you know that flutter that got chipped down to like 45% is dead. Like, and also you're like getting rid of the, the dragon weakness, which is the main reason you Terra in the first place. Like you're not really concerned with ground moves with Raging Bolt too much. Um, it's really only coming out from Lando, if anything. Uh, and I guess also Ursa Luna, but you know, it's just, yeah. who cares? Um, no, I like that. I like that. Um, that change one of the cool things at terra electric is uh you actually get to two tap flutter main because you can terra electric thunderbolt into thunderclap which mm-hmm. is when you're using an av set yeah because what's the t-bolt do t-bolt uh, with terra electric it does like 60 does do, to like, 70 60? yeah 60 to 70 yeah. and then the thunderclap picks the rest like 30 to 40 man who's, who who said 137 is an acceptable special attack stat for this thing <laughs> But, yeah. um, oh my god, these Pokemon are so min max. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Some of the some notable day two Pokemon we do see Venucol uh, at 23rd, which I think is pretty interesting. <laughs> um, I mean, like Venucol oh. feels like it doesn't exist, and even though a lot of people were like, "Hey, you know, Venucol will probably exist." Oh, um, yeah. Like Joe, I, right? <laughs> yeah, they're running Terra Fire Weather Ball, which that's a nuke, by the way. I ran a few teams of it on ladder. Um, Mm-hmm. I I think that the reason this team went far might have not even been like the Venucol mode, but literally just like Iron Hands, Farigraph, and Torkoal conceptually <laughs> should beat most things. It, it's oh. it's a Torkoal moment, you know? Like Torkoal's the sort of mon where even if it's like the most garbage mon in the format, if you get that Trick Room up, all of a sudden everyone panics. There's no Heatran to be found in this format. There's no Arm Rouge because Hatterene took over. Like it's literally just like, all right, buddy, where's your Wide Guard? Where's your Wide Guard? Um, so that's pretty cool. I mean, like having a Venusaur make that deep of a run is is really awesome. And no. also, you know, um, the Walking Wake is yeah. a really cool tool there. No, I think uh, I think one thing uh, also is that. A lot of people, when they use a chlorophyll Pokemon, kind of hyper fixate on that fast sleep powder. Mm-hmm. And my man said, nah. Nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is a nuke. <laughs> and Which it begs the question, if it is just a nuke, why Giga Drain over Energy Ball? Mm, I guess like Life Orb Recoil, right? Or, like the damage yeah. numbers aren't too different. You'd have to imagine, you have to imagine they're bulky then. And like, what are you Giga Draining? not just Max Max. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's like the next. I, you're thing. only really gonna Giga Drain like the three water types that you see right now, which are Urshifu Rapid Strike, Ogre Pond, uh, after it Terra's, and yeah. I'm blanking on the third one. What's the third water type? I didn't even know there's a third one. Honestly, Hold on, I'm, I'm scrolling. I know there's a third water there's type. I am no not cap, insane. No way. There's, there's there is a, a third water type. Yeah, Garen. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm 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 going crazy. There is no third water type. <laughs> there is no third water type. Hold on. I'm going to find a third one. I'm scrolling through results screen You're right scrolling now. Through. I will I will find a third water type. Yeah. Dondozo. Okay. Don- Got it. <laughs> I was right. Okay, it's Dondozo. Oh, don't 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 be like that. <laughs> because the Dondozo it lets you maybe live like another earthquake. Yes. Up. Yes. We're going to go with that. <laughs> We'll go with that. Well, I mean, it has a fat HP stat. Like, actually, that, that's yeah. that's not like a, that's not really like a bad point. All right, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Also, you know, Frigograph with Road Spray Hyper Voice, it lets it go on the offensive. So, yeah, <clears throat> that's that's really all I think we should cover for Dortmund. Yeah. I, there was a, a a day two Arachnid. Oh no, there was no day two Arachnid. I'm looking at the six threes now. Okay, no, now I'm just sad. All right, <laughs> oh, viewer yeah. questions. Let's do it. So, uh, when we announced this show, uh, 
which was today, I put out a tweet at the gym with Goku. And I said, big news, Jody and I are starting the most chronically online VGC podcast this Friday. We're recording tonight and would love to have a viewer question segment to drop any questions you have here. I'm going to pick a few random ones um, okay. and uh, we'll, we'll both answer. Uh, Jamie Keen asks, gouging, mo- gouging fire, raging bolt, walking wake, kiss, marry, kill. He had to go with kiss because you can't breed these mons. Bada boom. <laughs> Yeah, I like. I truthfully would would rather not, not for the I record, would breed them. Well. But uh, okay, so we're just um, marry I, killing them. I I think I think I would marry um walking wake just because like, it's the prettiest one to look at, and if it has to be in my house, I would like it to just kind of exist there. True. You know, pretty okay. pretty looking one, flowing hair. Um, probably kill gouging fire because it would probably burn down my house okay okay and then i guess that leaves kiss raging bolt but i'd have to get a ladder yeah um honestly i think that i'd have to kill raging bolt you know and it's just it's just but it's what just, if it's like a tree what if you like kill raging bolt and it falls in someone's house <laughs> You know what? I would rather that because, you know, I'm not the tallest guy, right? And I think if I yeah. if I if I kissed Raging Bolt, I'd get back problems. Uh if you I have to do it once. I'm sorry, Jody, were you planning on doing this like daily? Is this like a, a new thing look, for you? Look, I'm I'm just saying if there are situations where I'd have to kiss Raging Bolt multiple times Throughout a situation. short period of time, it's situation. it would just be uncomfortable. It's once, just once, okay. But if also okay. if I married right. Raging right. Bolt, Fine. I'd feel insecure because I'd always have to look up neck problems. Uh, but yes, okay. Yes. But also, we're, you could like, ride it killed. around like a horse. But you can like do that with all of them. Okay, that's true. And I think I'd rather ride like walking Wake like a horse. Yeah, and uh, I would I would kiss Wake uh, just because you know. It looks the most kissable. Take that as okay. you will. All and right. then I, I would guess. I would marry uh, Gouging Fire because I think it would just be nice to sleep next to. It's like, has it all will that. literally burn your house down. Then just make a house out of stone. Sure. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> so, uh, this one comes from uh, Dingus Girl, uh, who is also my one of my new editors and i need to get her work because i have been busy and i need to get her a project how many jodies could i haven't pre-read these questions by the way this is blind how many jodies could moxie take in a physical fight how many moxies could jody take i feel like these two questions answer each other um now assume that each has taken three shots of don julio reassess your answer okay so here's the thing i get stronger um that is a buff yeah no but that's a buff for me too is it a buff for you too yeah so i i think that base form you know i think that that you might you depends how on much the, do you weigh i think i weigh like 140 150 i 160. can literally i can bench press you quite easily how much do you weigh I weigh uh, 232, but um, a month ago I weighed 245. Say, say congrats. Congrats, man. I can bench press you. I can bench press that. 235 easy. You cannot, you cannot bench press 232. I'm doing one, two. Bro, bro, that's what I'm doing to you, bro. Two, two, all right, I'm, what, what's, what's, what's two plates? Two plates is 225, isn't it? You cannot do two plates on either side. How much you How much you want to <laughs> I, you know what, you know what, next, next event we're going to the gym. We will literally go to a gym. Yes, I will put the two will. plates on and we'll organize your funeral because it will crush you and destroy your sternum. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to say I could take on reasonably two Jodies. Yeah. I, I but like say... it would be an even fight at that point. <laughs> All right. But like, what if it's like, 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 well, how's your stamina? How's my stamina? I do an hour of cardio every single day. That's how I lost the weight. I mean, uh, fl- flutter man. <laughs> um, <laughs> I stream on my treadmill. All right. If that's if if you can take on two of me, that means I can take on half of you. 
is the math, right? <laughs> Jody, this is going to be a really rough way to start the show, but I would assume you are about half as strong as I am. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen you lift weight. Oh, oh well, I used to a lot because I ran track and like I was a big into sports. Okay, and stuff. then old Jody versus Marcos would be an even fight. Yeah, uh, right now skip I'm, Jody. <laughs> I'm like adult Gohan, you know. After Jody, got Jody a job. with with <laughs> less like um, Jody with less uh, kidney kidney um, failure or whatever. <laughs> uh, no, no, uh, trust me. Uh, when I quit my job, it's over because I'm actually take care of that. All right. This one comes from uh, Jimmy. Oh, that guy, Jimmy. That what are your guy. thoughts on fanny packs? Are you secretly strapped with it? I am. I am not. Um, I am not strapped, but I do have the fanny pack strapped to my to my chest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was there yeah. when you got that fanny pack, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Jody was part of the fanny pack origin story. <laughs> uh, would you ever wonder, like, why do people why do people wear those as intended? yeah no like it's like you mean like around the waist yeah no it just like, it looks so it doesn't, awkward it doesn't work if you don't got a booty it slides right off yeah and I'm like it's just weird, like it like man. hangs really weird too it does too and there's no like a right place to put it you can either put it like in front of your junk and that feels weird or you can put it slightly to the right but now like it's it's just like a big lump on the side of your hip. Yeah. There's no right way to put it. I've seen some people wear it like on their, like behind them, you know, like, like how do you, how do you even like reach that? I feel like you just get robbed at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah. off the top of your head with no, this is from, uh, Borgie, by the way, okay. um, off the top of your head with no proof whatsoever, how much money has specs to you earned this year? This year. <laughs> This year, like 2024 plus 2023, or just 2024 only? Because I'm going to say... It would just be 2024, I guess. Um, I'm gonna go how with, many specs to you have we even seen in, like, top 16? Like the, It's 2K minimum. Like, yeah, because, like, the, the, the bold set just started popping up, right? And they're usually specs to make up for the fact. Yeah, and... Uh, well, because I know uh, Steven Maya, Mia, Mia, Mia... And uh, Kyle, uh, both use specs to you, and they both got top yeah. eight. So that's two K so minimum. If, was that at the same event? That's no, the different events. Knoxville, Charlotte. Different events. Okay, let's assume one every other event this year. So some of them had to be like seven fifty dollars. I'm gonna say four K total. All right, I'm gonna go with four point five. Four point five. We're gonna figure that out later. Someone yeah. in the chat or someone in the comments do the do the math. Um, let's see if there's any Jody specific questions. <sighs> I don't think there are any specific ones. No, nah, there's a lot of there's a lot of both. Yeah. Um. This one's from Bay T S S F. Are there any niche support moves that you think could be viable, whether or not they're on meta Pokemon, such as Leer on Tornadus or Encore on Ogre Pond? Literally both of those were my answer. That was that was all I was gonna say. Um, for me, revival blessing. I feel like that move is just too broken to like have such zero use. But it's it's only but it, the there are no mons that have it that like it works with. There yeah. was the one that Chuppa ran for the Dondozo team, which made sense. Yeah. Um, and the only like instance of Rabska I can think of working is like. Rapska just got expanding force and it's a decently yeah. slow mon. You can use the pressure to revive something and that's like it. Yeah. So I what is there any other like Howl used to be niche. Not a lot of people knew how Howl worked until generation eight. Um really? or I guess not a lot of people knew how Howl worked until late in generation eight. Um because I was one of the first Howl guys with the Howl Thievil cheese. And then people started to figure out, like, oh, wait, Howl was, like, just, like, a good move. And, like, they would run it on, like, uh, Raikou in, like, yeah. the restricted formats. And, like, and, that like, was a thing. later Arcanine in, uh, before we in got Gen 9. Gouging Furay. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. That's it. I guess Anonymous maybe. Anonymous Snorlax. Oh, do I you with? subscribe to the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics? Why or why not? Favorite compound lift? And how would you fix American education? 
that's a whole different podcast, bro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how do um, you? <laughs> I oh. I don't subscribe to many worlds personally, but I'm also only a bachelor's degree holder. Uh, my favorite compound lift, I would say, is the um, clean. Um, and how would you fix American education? Uh, uh, maybe they teach us how to do taxes. <laughs> yeah, teach me how to do taxes. Yeah, okay. I appreciate it. Here, do either of you follow other competitive scenes? What similarities do you notice between VGC and other esports you're familiar with? I'll let you start. Yeah, well, uh, so like I said, I stopped playing 2017 to 2023, but I'm a sweaty boy. So I actually played a lot of Smash. Uh, and uh, was even uh, PR'd in my local scene. I was the best Smash player at my college. Uh, and uh, I picked up a lot of just fighting game, like, improvement uh, mentality. And I added that to how I play Pokemon. Like, I never get upset about, like, hacks or, like, uh, I always take accountability and, like, how I can improve. Uh, and that's something I got from that. And also, I played a lot of card games as well. And that's like very similar to where like luck management and risk management uh, play TFT as well. Uh, and just like all of these games like combine make what I feel like I have like one of the strongest mindsets in this game. And it's because I kind of take accountability. That's really it. That's the biggest one. Real. Yeah. I don't follow a lot of other competitive scenes. I think what's the only other competitive scene I follow? I think Pokemon is my only one, to be honest. Yeah. I, th I played a little bit of Melee in college, um, and people hated playing me because I would just crouch cancel a Samus and spam forward <laughs> tilt, down tilt, um, <laughs> and people didn't like that I would never wave dash or anything. I was just like, yeah, it seems like a waste of time, and then I would like forward tilt them and up tilt them until they like went off the stage and hit them with a charge shot and just like win a lot of like sets um, like that, I and I could always take them off of like my friends at these locals, but I can never take them off of like random people. So my friends stopped playing with me and then I had no reason to play anymore because they yeah. got really pissed off at me. But like, that's it. Um, <laughs> I, I think that my mindset with other games would be phenomenal because Pokemon has ruined it and I know they could always be worse. <laughs> like I'll, I'll like talk to like fighting game crowds yeah. and they'll be like, man, I hate, I hate playing grapplers. It's always like a 50, 50. And I'd be like, Oh, Oh, you want to hear about 50 fifties? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll feel better. Yeah. I love um, that for you. Let's take like three more of these. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do a random scroll. Do, 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 okay. Do, do. What are your guys' favorite teams that you brought to tournaments? Oh, wait. Favorite teams that we used? Yeah. That you personally brought to a tournament. I'm going to assume uh, a regional level. Yeah. Uh, At minimum, not like locals. You, know, you can go yeah. internets if you want. So my favorite team that I uh, used at a re regional, actually, it's my first regional top cut. It was after 2014 Worlds. Uh, I played a team known as Double Double Double, and it was double flying types, double dragon, double fairy, uh, Talonflame, Staraptor, Gardevoir, Mawile, Garchomp, Hydreigon, and like it just worked. It was like a goofy team, and it worked. Like, like the Gardevoir was a trick room setter. Uh, that had the Maul Wild be able to sweep. Star Raptor was a Scarf, Final Gambit, Chunk with Brave Bird, Intimidator. I had Double Intimidate as well. Uh, the Garchomp, Hydreigon, just like Earthquake, just Double Dragon moves. Uh, it was a bulky Talonflame that can also set up Tailwind. So it was just like a bunch of different things happening. Uh, and back then it was like best of one. Uh, and I actually ended up going 8-0. And then I lost in top cut, but that was my first top cut ever. And I, I'm very fond of that team. Nice. What about you, man? Uh, I would say for me, probably my Charlotte team from last year. Um, that was my first missed day two. Like the first one where it began the streak of losing my win in him. Um, <laughs> no. And I actually 100% could have made day two if I made one very obvious play that I didn't make. Um, effectively, what happened is my Wo Chen was on the field. Yeah. Um, and there was a Terra Fire King Gambit and a Arcanine, I think, on the other side of the field. Yeah. And I had my 
um, Terra Water Palafin on the field next Ooh. to my Wochun, and I was scared to switch in my Arcanine because I'm like, oh, I don't want to give it a Defiant boost because then it gets a Defiant boost. Even though the Jet Punch would just KO it. Yeah. Um, Mentally, my mind wouldn't let me give it a Defiant boost even yeah. though it wouldn't matter. No. Oh. And I never switched in the Arcanine, and because the Wochun was on the field, the King Gambit lived on one. Moment and that's how I... Yeah, and that's how I ended up losing my win in in at Charlotte. But that team um, was abhorrent, frankly. It was an abhorrent <laughs> abomination. I think I remember it. Let me pull it up. I have it on Showdown somewhere. Um, if I can't find it, I'll just try to recite it from memory. But I yeah. think it was Arcanine, Garganical, and it was Terraflying Garganical because at the time... Um, yeah. Great Tusk was running around. Oh, and right. <laughs> it was Great Tusk. It was Great Tusk's son, which terrifying Garganical walls the whole team, right? Oh. Um, here, let me just throw up Garganical. Garbanam? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here it is. Here it is. Um, so it was Choice Specs Fluttermane, Safety Goggles Arcanine, Mystic Water Haze Palafin, Citrusberry Wochen, Leftovers Terraflying Garganical, and an Assault Vest Glamora. Where instead of running um, Toxic Debris, I was running Corrosion with Venashock. Because if you Venashocked an Amoongus after a Corrosion uh, from Mortal Spin, it like was a roll to KO some of them at the time since they were running so much physical defense. Mm -hmm. It was a really fun team. And I'm, I'm so annoyed I missed day two with it. Like that would have been my first. It would have been my first day two and it would have been like the first attempt at a day two I ever made. <laughs> Uh, but that's that's my personal favorite team okay. I've ever run. All right, two more, uh, two more. I got I got I got um, one. I got one. I pulled up. All right. You see, all right. Zenconic ask if you had to explain VGC Twitter to someone outside of VGC, how would you describe it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> brain rot. Like it's mostly brain rot. Yeah. Not like not like in a derogatory way, but like it is. You know? Yeah, yeah. So like slowly, like you just find certain things funny that you know are not, but they are. Yeah. Like it's a bunch of like thirty year old people, twenty to thirty year old people <laughs> who played Pokemon so much growing up that they're trying to relive their childhood um by playing it competitively now. And because they only associate uh, socially with people through Pokemon, uh, the Twitter space is almost exclusively jokes that only they would understand. And not jokes that Pokemon fans understand, jokes that competitive Pokemon fans understand, which makes them either extremely funny or the least funny thing you've ever heard in your life. Yes. Um, and they also have the tendency to loop around, well, every Twitter community does, but to loop around the same argument. Be prepared to see the same argument like once a month. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, and it's just always it's always always starts the same it always ends the same and it's just like people love yapping about the same thing but uh yeah i think you covered it but uh but the uh the other question i'm looking at here uh is Anthony, it from iron boulder lies oh no you want to you want to go okay. with that one first <laughs> but no uh so ant atk asked the best vgc player to get liddy with uh probably ant yeah honestly ant is ant Go is ant. good uh, all right but second place <laughs> <laughs> um i'm gonna have to go with brady smith yeah. brady smith Tell is always it. an entertaining time <laughs> and he's always down he is mm -hmm. always down that is that is val i need to talk to brady more truthfully but uh, I, I'm going to take your word for it. Uh, I think for me, you know, I think, bro, I think you're pretty fun to go out with. Like, honestly, it's always it's always going to be. I was trying to avoid saying you because you're the co-host. But, yeah, I guess you yeah. would be number two. Yeah, no, I'll just say it. You, like, obviously love going out with you. Uh, I think second for me, oh, there's just too many good, like, there's just too many you know, Take I guess Justin like the Tang biggest to the club and try to get him to dance. Get That's Tang, weird. get Tang to the club, 
and try to get Justin to dance. Or he'll just pass out at the nearest yeah. chair. <laughs> but uh, is that's also been interesting. Because uh, that's something that, you know, I took my time skip 2017 to 2023. And all of a sudden, everyone is like adults in their mid-20s. And they like go out after events. And like that's like, that was that was shocker to me. It's crazy. The entire like demographic aged up where the majority of players suddenly were able to drink. <laughs> Before yeah. it was like 50 50, and now it's like the majority. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I was going to do a little mini game, but I think this first episode's long enough as is. We're at an hour and 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, we've, we've been yapping for quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, and it somehow stayed more on track than I thought it would. Like, I don't <laughs> know how we did that. I thought we were going to go off topic so much quicker. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's basically uh, it for the first one. Um, you know, if you enjoyed, leave a like on this, subscribe to the channel, make sure you check out Jody's Twitter, uh, my Twitter, uh, we'll be taking, we can probably do a couple of YouTube comment questions for the next one too. And also Twitter. Yeah. So, you know, any questions you have, uh, and also, you know, topics you want covered, that sort of thing. Uh, I have to give Jody half the money to this video, so that's the thing I gotta do now. Now I have to do math. Oh, fuck. Um, yeah. I didn't even, like, yeah. think about that. Yippee. Yeah. Okay. I shouldn't have said anything then. I'm um, gonna... <laughs> <laughs> Click my feet. Yippee. Woohoo. Right. <laughs> yeah, thank you all for watching. We'll see you in the next one, uh, which is in a week. Are there any tournaments happening? Uh, there's the, uh, the week of marathon tournaments apparently happening. That's Tommy all Tuesday, baby. You oh, already yeah. know. Apparently Tommy's going to like donate a dollar for every match that I win in those. So I have yeah. to marathon them now. Same, same. I, I was, oh, that's actually next, next week, bro. I, my math is cooked. Oh. Time is fake. Uh, build stall. All right. Thank you for watching everyone. See ya. <laughs> See ya.